So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and as you can see behind me we got some nice little desk upgrades that I want to walk everybody through and give you guys my full productivity suite, how I use all of my tech devices, what they're used for, are they more leisure, are they more for productivity, and just give you guys some ideas as to how to set up your work from home you know, situation. Whether you work from home on a daily basis or you work from home maybe half the time and you need to grab and go whenever you need to. So this is gonna be a perfect desk setup for anybody that's working from home or just wants a nice office setup to get some work done because honestly, the better your setup looks, at least for me personally, just kind of like revs me up that much more to get all my work done. But without further ado, let's go through every single thing that we have on this desk, including the desk, and then some of the things around it as well. Let's get into it. You know, thumbs up for the Archie picture back there. A little portrait of my Shiva, no big deal. I'm a little bit obsessed. But to get started with the video, we actually have to start with honestly, this guy right here, which is the desk that I've been using for I wanna say for the better part of two years now at this point. And this desk is by a company called Autonomous. You guys have probably heard them in the past, so autonomous.ai. They make great standing quality desks for a great price. There are some desks out there that are a little bit cheaper, companies like FlexiSpot, which I've also tried and also recommend if you're trying to go to that price point. But for that $600 or that $500 to like $800 price range, this is amazing. And again, I've had it for two years. It's lasted me through two total moves up and down the east coast of the United States. It's gone from New Jersey to Florida, back to New Jersey. And I absolutely love this desk. I have it in the white wooden top finish. I have the white legs. I wanted to white out everything that I could. And again, it is an autonomous desk. It is a standing desk as we are standing right now, obviously. And it's got four modes where you can actually save. So four memory modes. So if you want to do a sitting and a standing, and then maybe you're, if your significant other or somebody else that you live with is also kind of working from home, maybe on opposite days, you can save their sitting and standing desk or whatever the case may be. But you have four preloaded memory kind of height adjustments that you can do. And again, this thing is very quiet. It's very sturdy. Very rarely have I had to like tinker with it at all or like tighten any of the bolts. Happened one time, but it was after the move. And then overall from a sturdiness standpoint and a quality standpoint, it's hard to beat this price. So this one was about $600 and that brings you with the 54 inch XL tabletop, which I wanted because I wanted as much space to work with. And I think they have an even bigger one now, which I probably would gravitate to because as you can see, even though I have it nicely set up, I wish there was a little bit more room, but overall for what I'm using it for, it's a perfect size and I absolutely love it. So I do highly recommend Autonomous and I'm gonna link all the products that I mentioned in the description below if you guys wanna check them out and pick them up. But that is the desk. So you go as low as 29.5 inches in terms of low height and as high as 49 inches in height. And I'm about 5'11", and for me, that's plenty of room. Maybe if you're like 6'7", it might be a little bit tougher, but overall, it'll work for most people. So that is a standing desk that we're rocking, the Autonomous, dot AI 54 inch XL version and I absolutely love it. So now let's talk about the actual components that I have on top of the desk. And we're gonna start with the main things that are holding kind of everything together and holding everything up. So back here you see a monitorizer by a company called GroveMade. You guys have probably heard of them. They make very high quality wooden products. You know, they've made by hand. They're, they smell freaking amazing. And these are a combo of wood and leather to give you that quality feel. And again, the more quality and more, I guess, happy you are to go sit down at your desk, the more work you're gonna get done. It's like, it's a proven fact in my opinion, and that's the case for me. So this is the desk monitor riser by GroveMade, and then to the right of it, what I like about this is that it's a little bit modular if you think about it. So it cuts across pretty much the entire back end of my desk, and it takes up a lot of space for sure, but with that space, you now have room to do more, right? Now that it's the monitor is risen a little bit, you have spaces underneath the monitor to hide little things, little trinkets, you know, chargers, power banks, whatever the case may be. And then to the right of it, you have a little tray system and a slot system. So as you can see, my laptop, so I have the M1 MacBook Air, that's sitting on top of the GroveMade laptop riser. And what that does is it actually slides into this little modular hole. So that way it's level with my actual monitor and it's at the same kind of height. And also it still allows me to use my webcam because as you guys can see, I don't have an actual dedicated webcam. I still use my MacBook Air webcam when needed, even though most of the time I do end up doing it on the iPad Pro. But again, I like the modularity. I like being able to customize whatever I want. And then underneath that is actually a little kind of drawer tray, which you can pull all the way out because it's not really attached. It's just a little modular section that fits it perfectly, but you can pull it all the way out and there's little divots in there to hold all your little miscellaneous items. So what I have on there is like my wallet, you know, some microfiber cloths. Sometimes I throw my Apple pencil on there. I don't really write with classic pen and paper anymore, so I don't need the little pencil holders, 
but they're there if you are, if you guys are a little bit more old school. I try to go fully paperless as much as I can, and that's kind of why the, the iPad is my go-to and my be-all end-all when it comes to any sort of documentation, but it's there if you need it, and I love this kind of like monitorizer and the modularity that comes with Grovemade. And again, the quality is freaking out of this world. And I mean, for the price, it better be, but the quality is freaking amazing, so highly recommend it if you guys are looking for a quality desk riser or just a quality brand to work with. And then let me know what you guys think, because I have the white wooden tabletop, and then we have the dark tinted wood over here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I thought it would look a little bit weird, but overall, I really like how it came out. And if we continue on with what's on the desk, we're gonna leave the actual tech items for the very end, but in front of the actual desk monitor and the desk riser, we have an Orbit Key XL desk mat. So this Orbit Key XL desk mat is actually awesome, because it has two kind of functions, or maybe even three if you really think about it. So it's a nice leather XL desk mat, and Again, I got the XL desk mat thinking it would be a little bit small because normally when I buy these on Amazon, the XL ones aren't really that big. And I guess it's my fault for not measuring it, but I ended up getting used to it. The XL mat is huge. So if you don't have the desk size big enough for it, make sure you measure your desk, make sure you measure the XL mat because they do have a smaller one, which is just a regular desk mat, but still exactly the same, just a little bit smaller. So it has all the same features I'm about to mention. Just make sure you measure your stuff because I don't want you guys to buy the XL mat and it be too big and then you guys come and tell me like, hey, it's way too big. Again, you can see that this is a 54 inch across desk, and you can see that this desk mat is going about two thirds to almost three quarters of the way covering up the actual desk itself. But again, it's made out of really nice premium leather, and what I like about it is the functionality again, right? It's not just a desk mat. So the first thing that you see is that at the very top of the desk mat, there's kind of like a little railing or like a divot that goes across the entire desk mat. And with that, it actually comes with a little magnet. What that magnet does, it's a cable organizer. So if you have a loose cable that you always use maybe to charge an iPhone, or for my instance, to charge my iPad Pro, I actually put that cable through that little magnet and it kind of just keeps it in place. And again, it acts kind of like a railing so you can kind of shift it back and forth depending on where you put your iPad or whatever device that you're charging. Or again, maybe you have a wired keyboard that you want to have the cable kind of a little bit more organized. Even though it's very simple, it's just so unique and, the and it's, I just use it how it's supposed to be used. And it's something that you don't think you need, but once you have it, you can't like go back just having cables all over the place on your desk. So that is the OrbiKey Desk XL mat. And then it has one more trick up its sleeve, which I actually really, really like. So if you actually lift the leather part of the desk mat, on the bottom of it, you actually have another section to hide away like very thin items. So in my opinion, you kind of put like little documents down there, some pieces of paper if you need it. You know, maybe you can put some NFC tags down there if you want to tap somewhere to actually activate some random NFC tags with shortcuts. So the bottom of it is actually made out of felt, which I like also for the desk itself because it protects the desk and doesn't leave any marks from the leather also, which is something that did kind of happen to me before with other leather products. So that is the Orbit Key desk mat, the XL version. And again, the regular size version brings all the same features and all the same functionality, just at a smaller form factor. And then if we continue with what's on the actual desk mat itself, so for my keyboard solution, I like to have my keyboards as compact as possible, right? And I do have the Apple Magic Keyboard, which is kind of stowed away right now because I don't really like the white color, but the one that I use is a Satechi X1 Slim. So it is a compact keyboard, so it doesn't have the number pad. They do have a number pad version, if that's your, you know, your flavor or your taste, but I personally never use the number pads, but that is the keyboard that I have. So it's the Satechi X1 Slim compact keyboard. I believe it runs about $70, but again, most of these items I've had for a long time. So I've been testing them through just my daily use, right? I've had this Satechi keyboard for like nine months. I did clean it for the first time today because I had some gunk on it from just my kind of sweaty and clammy fingers and stuff like that. But overall, I love the functionality because A, it's USB-C to charge, and then B, it also connects up to three different devices. So if I really wanted to, and let's say I don't want to use my Magic Keyboard for the actual iPad Pro and I have the iPad Pro on a stand, I can quickly toggle between my MacBook and my iPad Pro with the same exact keyboard. So that is a keyboard of my choice, and I just like the colorway too. I'm a big fan of like dark, minimal, kind of like gray, black, silver colors. And then white, it kind of would have just stood out just too much for me. And then for my mouse, I have the MX Anywhere S2. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, one of my original videos on the channel is about the MX Anywhere S2. So to me, this mouse is almost two years old. I've been using this mouse every single day, whether on the desk, traveling, with the iPad Pro, with Mac OS, and it works amazingly. And it's the same exact function as the keyboard, right? This one's by Logitech, like I said. The only downfall with this one is that because it is a little bit older, it still charges via micro USB. But if you get the S3, which is the same exact thing, that one actually charges with USB-C. So that is a new version. If you guys wanna go with USB-C, by all means, I think it's another $20 for that one because they still sell the S2 for I think $70. And the way that I categorize the Anywhere S2, it's kinda of like the cheapest high quality mouse that you can get because it's got 
some nice heft to it so it feels firm it feels dense you have the ability to again charge it via micro usb but then also just like the keyboard you can connect it to up to three different devices at the same time so again it works with my ipad pro it works with mac os with ipad os i can even connect it to my freaking iphone if i really wanted to the fact that i have that kind of range and that visibility and being able to switch between different devices as much as I love the Magic Mouse and the Magic Trackpad and the Magic Keyboard from Apple, those are all locked into the same device. I mean, until Universal Control comes out and maybe that'll switch things up a little bit for me. But for now, this has been a tried and true solution for me. And even before the Satechi X1 Slim, I actually had their previous keyboard because I've just been, I love the chiclet style keyboards and I love the fact that they're a quality recognized brand. And then on top of that, you can switch between three different devices. So that's what I use for my mouse and my keyboard. And then right in front of my Satechi keyboard is actually one of the newest additions to the desk setup. And it is a wrist kind of stand or wrist rest from Grove Made again. Now, I was one of those people that thought like, why would anybody need a wrist rest? Like I get it, carpal tunnel and like all that stuff, but how much is this gonna really help? And holy crap, I was dead wrong. So I ended up getting this thing thinking it would kind of complete the look. I got it more for aesthetic than anything else. Like for me, it was way more form over function but there's a lot more function than I thought you would get out of it. Like it does help your wrist. It does kind of alleviate some like uncomfortableness in your hands, especially if you're sitting there for 10, 12 hours, just typing away at a keyboard. It helps elevate your hands a little bit more give you a better arc in the way you actually type with the keyboard. So it does help and have some benefit, right? This one is by Grove Made. It's again, very high quality, made out of wood and leather, but there are cheaper ones. So I do recommend, like if you guys are one of those people like I was, that thought, hey, wrist rests were you know, no big deal. I think they're a waste of money. It's more for look than anything else. You'll be surprised how much better your hands will feel and your like typing experience will be when you just elevate it that much more. It's kind of crazy to think about. But again, that is what I have right in front of it. And that kind of completes what I have on the actual Excel desk mat. And then a couple more pieces of tech before we get into the actual computers that we use. So to the left of the monitor, I have a Satechi MagSafe charger, a two-in-one charger. So that's where I put up my new iPhone 13 Pro Max whenever I need, I need to get a quick charge. Again, it's MagSafe compatible, so it has all the magnets and they're very strong and it keeps it up there, but it only charges at 7.5 watts. So it's not MagSafe certified, I guess, so it doesn't do the 15 watts. But there's a lot of companies, I don't think there's any companies that do that besides, I think it's Anchor. I think they're the only ones that are MagSafe certified. So, but I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. But right now, that one charges at 7.5 watts and then it's got a perfect little spot for your AirPods Pro or regular AirPods or AirPods 3 now that they're out. So it has another secondary wireless charger to charge those up. I wish they had a Apple Watch charger built into there somewhere, but again, I don't really charge my Apple Watch on my desk. That's mostly a nighttime thing. I just put it on my nightstand and I have an Apple charger there, but it would have been nice to be included in there. But overall, from an aesthetic standpoint, very high quality. I mean, you guys know Satechi at this point, the same people that make this keyboard that I have, absolutely love that little stand and it works very, very well and works as advertised. And then another thing that I do want to mention is how I'm powering everything. So I did finally cable manage the crap out of this thing. So I'm going to show you guys some B-roll. There should be zero, and I mean zero, hanging cables, which I love to see. But the main thing that's really powering it is I have a power strip attached underneath the actual desk to plug in whatever I need. But there's only one main real kind of hub that I'm using to power all the auxiliary stuff. So plugged into that Satechi stand, I have it in a 65 watt RAV Power 4 port charger. And also I have my iPad Pro charger connected to that as well. So, and then the way that I'm getting power to my actual MacBook Air is just a USB-C cable coming from the back of this BenQ monitor. And I think that's a perfect segue to now talk about the big ticket items, which again, we're gonna start with the BenQ monitor. So this is an amazing monitor. I used to have an LG 29 inch ultra wide, but kind of a cheap version that I got from Sam's Club, one of those wholesale stores for 200 bucks. But this thing, holy crap, this BenQ monitor, this is a 32 inch like tall aspect ratio monitor. And the reason I went with a tall aspect ratio is because I wanted something that would mimic the iPad Pro as closely as possible. When I was using an ultra wide and then trying to use an iPad Pro with it, it just looked so weird. Like there was more black space on the monitor than there was actual screen real estate usable with the iPad Pro. So this BenQ monitor, again, it's a 32 inch, it's got HDR and it's got this thing that's supposed to emulate having blue light glasses on. So I'm kind of like double protected with these blue light glasses. But again, I'm gonna leave it linked down in the description below because it's got some long form number. I think it's like UW, like five, two, eight, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it down in the description below because it's a great monitor. Color accuracy is amazing. I mean, you're not gonna get any XDR display type stuff, but again, that one's $5,000, right? That's a $5,000 monitor. And I believe this one is $600, but it's worth it. Not only is it very crisp when it comes to image quality and being able to view everything in HDR and in 4K, but also it's got a built-in speaker, which is something that my last monitor didn't have. So now when I do plug in my iPad Pro and I plug it in with just a USB-C cable, and it would default to the monitor when it comes to audio, 
now I can actually get some audio instead of having to use like a Bluetooth device or some sort of Bluetooth speaker to play some audio. So absolutely love this BenQ monitor, highly recommend it. It's super thin and it brings an abundance of ports. So right now, like I said, I have my MacBook Air connected to it, my M1 MacBook Air via just a USB-C cable, and that does power delivery and video and audio. Love that. It also has two HDMI ports on the back and a display port on the back. And that's a beautiful thing to see. So that is my BenQ monitor. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna have this thing for years unless something crazier comes out. And again, it is pretty tall. So if you're used to something that's a little bit normal or even ultra wide, it is a tall monitor. So keep that in mind. But, it, but I went with the tall monitor and that aspect ratio because I wanted to use my iPad Pro and make it look at least a little bit better and experience the iPad Pro a little bit better with that aspect ratio. Because then the letterboxing and those black bars get that much smaller. And then lastly, let's round off this video by talking about the two computers that I have on here. So obviously, if you guys are watching the channel or have watched the channel, you guys know that I am an iPad Pro fanatic. I use my iPad Pro 99.9% .9 of the time when it comes to doing anything from productivity to leisure to work to anything in between. I go with the iPad Pro because it's just an amazing device and it's fun to use, right? So I have the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the baseline model, so only 128 gigs of storage and Wi-Fi only. The reason I didn't go any higher in terms of storage is because now that my editor of choice, my video editor of choice, you can now work off of an external SSD, there was no need to kind of give Apple and pay that Apple tax for more storage. So I have a 500 gigabyte RAV power SSD that I use whenever I'm editing actual footage, but everything else, 128 gigs is more than enough for all my applications and any movies that I save and things like that. And then on the iPad Pro itself, I actually have a paper-like screen protector. They're a channel sponsor. Definitely check them out in the link below. They're always hooking us up and they finally came out with an iPad mini screen protector. So definitely check it out. But then I also have a Pataka thin case, which kind of covers the side railings because if you're aware, with the Magic Keyboard, it does protect the back and it protects the front when it's closed, but those side railings are exposed. So Pataka came out with this ultra thin kind of little casing. It's almost like a skin, like it's almost a skin, but it is hard shell and it covers all the railings and it has a three pin connector pass through to allow you to still use it with the Magic Keyboard. So again, perfect segue. What it's attached to is a Magic Keyboard. It very, very, very rarely comes off the Magic Keyboard. I treat my iPad almost like a laptop. Every now and then I'll pull it off when I'm using Affinity Photo to edit our thumbnails and things like that. But for the most part, it stays on this Magic Keyboard and the Magic Keyboard is the best accessory that I've ever purchased for any product, period. Yes, you can talk about how expensive it is. Yes, it's $350. And yes, probably the better option for most people is to get a MacBook Air because of the price and what it includes already. But for me, I love the Magic Keyboard. It gives you just another way of interacting with the iPad that wasn't around before. And it kind of turns your iPad into a totally separate device. Like it adds a totally new product category when you throw that Magic Keyboard on there. And that's just my opinion. You know, you guys can have yours 100%, but I love the Magic Keyboard and I recommend it for anybody looking to take their iPad experience to that next level, right? That's what I recommend the Magic Keyboard for. And then lastly, right behind the actual iPad Pro, I have my MacBook Air. Again, it's a baseline M1 MacBook Air. It runs everything that I need to, right? The only reason I gravitate to the MacBook Air when I can't do something on the iPad is when I'm dealing with multiple kind of PowerPoint files, multiple Excel files where I'm kind of moving everything around where I need floating windows, right? Where I need a real secondary display support. And right now the iPad Pro doesn't give us that. And that is the only time that I go to the MacBook Air. Everything else, is done on the iPad Pro. But that is the M1 MacBook Air, eight gigs of RAM. And here's a little trick for you guys. If you guys are looking to get any new Apple products, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the Apple screen. I think this is mostly for the US, maybe in the UK they do it too, but they have an Apple education store. They do not verify anything. You do not need an EDU email. You do not need to be a teacher. And they take usually anywhere from 70 to like $200 off, depending on what item you get. So I got this MacBook Air for $900 and I was still able to trade in an old MacBook Air and it still got shipped directly to my house. No questions asked. So that's a little tip for you guys if you guys are looking to get a new Apple product, but it only works for computing devices. So you don't get any deals on AirPods or you don't get a deal on that new cloth, <laughs> that $20 cloth. But hey, I'll take whatever I can get when it comes to paying a little bit less for Apple products. But that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, you can tell maybe that I'm very excited about my desk setup. I think it's finally to the point where I can kind of leave it as is, right? I'm excited to go to work every single day. I'm excited to get on the computer. I have everything that I need. I got the iPad, I got the Mac got all the charges that I need. I got the awesome BenQ monitor, which kind of just helps with that experience that much more. And overall, again, it's just exciting to have a nice little desk setup. So that's gonna do it for this video. Again, I'm gonna leave everything down in the description below. If you guys wanna pick something up, it does help the channel every single time you guys click on those links. So that would be amazing. And again, that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Leave some comments down below. Did you learn something new? Did you find something that maybe you wanna add to your setup? 
that you saw in this setup that you thought, hey, that looks kind of good. If I were to give my recommendation of any of your products, except for, I guess, the computing devices, I don't know, I might go with the Orbit Key XL mat, because, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit pricey, but I, I love it. I love that XL mat. But I mean, any of these options are great options and they've been you know, tried and true tested. Like I've been using these for a long time. It wasn't like I got it last week and I'm making a quick video. Like I've had these for months. The newest items that I have on here are by Grovemade, but again, they're not tech items. They're more furniture to kind of elevate your tech. So I'll keep you guys posted to see maybe if I get any nicks or scratches along the way, but that's what it's supposed to do. It's real wood, right? The longer you use it, the more worn down it's supposed to look. It's very similar to leather. So again, that is my two cents on everything. Leave some comments down below. If you made it to the end, comment down that you're a legend because you guys are. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We're gonna go back to the Microsoft videos real soon and stay tuned because we got one more paper like to give away before Black Friday because their Black Friday sale is gonna be dope. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.